Thank you for joining me for the word with Shep. Uh, all praises to the Most High, Ahiah, in the name of his son, Yeshai, Yeshai, some pronounce it, and thanking him for the precious Ruach Hakadash. It is so good to be able to be alive and to declare the goodness of the Most High. Uh, and thinking about that, his goodness, um, give me one moment to express some praise to the Most High, Ahaya. Thou art worthy, Ahaya, and I give you all my praise. Thou art worthy, Ahaya, and I give you all my praise. Thou art worthy, Ahaya, and I give you all my praise. I will lift you up, lift you up. Give you all my praise. I'll lift you up, lift you up. Give you all my praise. Thou art worthy, my Father, and I give you all my praise. Thou art worthy, my Father, and I give you all my praise. Thou art worthy, my Father, and I give you all my praise. I will lift you up, lift you up. Give you all my praise. I lift you up, lift you up. Give you all my praise. Oh, I lift you up, I lift you up. Give you all my praise. And that is my heart desire. To give the most high, higher, the I am that I am. The one some people call Lord and God. I'm just being more specific according to what he revealed to Moses. I believe in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. That he's the I am that I am. And when you look in the Hebrew at that word. It means a higher, a sure, a higher. By calling him a higher, I just use I am. But he's so worthy of the praise. And I believe what he would have me talk to you about today um, is a highest written law within the heart. A highest written law within the heart. And I want to go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 31, I believe it is. Jeremiah 31. And I want to look at verse, verses, um, 30 down a little bit. We'll see, but well, 31 down. Jeremiah declaring the word of the Most High to the house of Israel, Judah. He says, Behold, the day come, saith the Lord. And we know seeing the Lord there, you could put the word Ahia. That I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So that's verse number 31. So the covenant is going to be with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Jacob's sons. Not according, going to verse 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, said the Lord. So in this verse, he's saying the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, it's not going to be according to the covenant that I made with those that came out with Moses out of Egypt. And he speaks about how they broke that covenant. Although he tried to be a husband to them, they were like an, an, an unfaithful wife. Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant. And when we talk about covenant, we're talking about an agreement, right? In this case, agreement between two, uh, you can say people, the most high is a spirit, but he's, he's our father. It's, 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 it's an agreement between our maker and ourselves. In this case, it was those living, the children of Israel and Judah and the most high that the covenant was made between that they broke. But here he's saying in verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make, meaning at this time, at the time he was writing this, that covenant had not been made. All they had was the covenant that the Most High had given them 
uh, in the book of Exodus and when you read in Deuteronomy. He says, after those days, verse 33, saith the Lord, I will put my law, his laws, his rules, his principles, his ordinances, his will expressed in words. I will put my law in their inward parts and write them in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. So we see here, Jeremiah sees a day that the Most High is going to do something that's quite interesting that really I don't think Israel understood because he was looking past the death and resurrection of the Lamb, Yeshua, the one that will come and become like a man, like the Hebrews, um, the children of Jacob, take on a body like theirs and, and claim um, the, his descendancy, his, his ancestry or whatnot from the tribe of Judah. But he says, I will put them in the inward parts. So there's an external part and there's the inward part. The inward part here is deeper than the flesh. Deeper than what we can see with our eyes. He's going to the immaterial part. Dealing with that spiritual mind and the spirit. All right. There are three parts of man, spirit, soul, and body. Man is a spirit. Okay. We see that when people die, the body's still left there. They put the body in a coffin. But that person's breath, their life has exited that body. And they have a mind, a spiritual mind, where they be accountable to the Most High. Now, they had a carnal mind or a natural mind while they were living in this earth. But once breath stops flowing from their lungs and water, excuse me, and blood is not being pumped through their veins, that, car that natural mind, it was for the earth. But the spiritual mind that they have, where they'll be able to give account for the deeds and the things that they have said and done while they were in the earth will accompany their spirit, their life, their breath. And they will be aware when they stand before the Most High, it won't be that they're not knowledgeable of things that they've done in the earth because they have a spiritual mind. All right? we, we use words like the conscious mind and then we use a word called subconscious. And, and people don't really understand it in detail. But subconscious mean that sub meaning beneath, meaning it's deeper. I believe our values and things like that that we establish in life, those things come out of what they call the subconscious. But I don't call it the subconscious. I call it the spiritual mind. It's that spiritual awareness. A young boy may see his father get drunk and beat his mom every other night. And he loves his mom. But he's not big enough to stand up to his daddy. He grows up and decides, I'm never going to hit a woman. That knowledge that he gained through perceiving his father beating the mother brought so much pain to his heart that that knowledge went beneath the conscious mind, the natural mind, into deep down inside of him, beneath it, where his values are formed. And like I said, we don't understand all of how that happened, but you need to understand that there's an inward part to you. And we need the word of God to go into that inward part, to go deeper than just the surface. Now, there's a teaching that maybe I'll do one day uh, to describe this, okay? And Yeshua puts it this way. He puts it like a seed. And he, he takes that seed and, and I'll see, let me see if I could quickly um, find that. He likens the word, the law, the intent. Words are the intent of a person expressed in words. Expressed in, you know, sound. Or if you're going to write it, uh, you express it in, you know, syllables and, and um, should I say, uh, written letters that, that form what we call words. And, and so Yeshai, he did a teaching, and I'm going to see if I can locate this right quick, just so you have it as a reference, so you can understand this, because this is very, very important. All right, let's try 
just I believe it's Matthew. Yes, we can we can find it in, in Matthew. Uh, chapter number 13. He's, he's using four different types of ground to describe how the seed, which represents the word, will affect the ground, which represents the heart. So the seed is God is the most high's intent. It's his laws. It's, it's, it's what he wants to reveal to his people. And so Yeshai says in verse number three of St. Matthew 13, verse number three, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out, went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowl came and devoured them. Some fell upon thorny place, st stony places where they had not much earth, forthwith they sprung up because they had no uh, because they had no depthness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And so he's breaking down um, how the word interacts with the heart. Jeremiah was saying that in this new covenant, the Most High is going to put the word in the person's inner being. All right. So when you look at the seed hitting the ground and the birds coming along and pick it up, it was on the top. It was like just the conscious, the natural conscious mind. The person received the sound or the letters or whatnot, and they read the Bible. And so on that surface level, they have the seed sitting there. But a seed cannot become a part of the ground until it's buried. So Yeshua was explaining to them that these people with that type of heart, the devil could come like a bird and pick away the seed. All right. But then when he gets to the latter ground, where well, he's saying that it's good ground and it bring forth 60, 100 fold. It's that word that is going down deep into the to the soil, deep, sub, going down deep and it dies and the embryo comes out. It forms a root, the root goes down and gains strength with more water and all of that. Then out of that unseen ram, that inward part, out of that inward part, we begin to see in the external or the outward part, a revelation of something that's already taken place down deep. So what the devil wants to do is before the word of God ever gets down into our hearts, he wants to come and remove it quickly. As Yeshua was saying here, all right, as he was saying here, he want to come and remove it. But if you let the word go down into the inner part of you, that's where seed is meant to uh, germinate, right? And uh, it's meant to break apart and life comes out of it because of the uh, water touching it and, and life and oxygen coming into it. Then it will begin to grow out of the inward part and you, you will see the fruit that was in the embryo of that seed, right? You will see that fruit now go through the elementary stages and go from being a seed. Uh, you see where the seed then becomes the root and the root becomes the shoot and now the shoot becomes the fruit. And people can benefit from the fruits in the external now only because the seed went down deep into the inward part. All right. I hope you got the understanding on that. And you could go and read it for yourself in, Math in St. Matthew, not St. Matthew, but Matthew chapter number 13. All right. So I won't get stuck there. We go back to Jeremiah. But I just want to deal with that inward part, okay? And see, when you're dealing with Israel, and I explained this before, all men before Christ came, the, 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 the inward part was of darkness. God's word, the seed, is light. St. John 6, 63, Christ talks about this. You know, he lets us know that the flesh profit is nothing. It is the spirit, you know, that gives life. And the words that I speak unto you, this is Yeshua speaking. He said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they're life. So the Most High's word, words are spiritual. That means they are alive. So when you take that living word and submit it into the inward part of a dead, uh, not fertile, not able to produce ground. And that's what our ground was like before we received redemption, salvation through Yeshua. 
All right. Until that happened, our soil was not right. It was not. It, it, it was infested with stuff. You know, if you got uh, chemicals spilt on dirt and you got all kind of junk and debris and things that will harm the soil, making it not fertile. Then you take a good quality seed of, say, a watermelon or whatnot. And you plant it in that ground. You don't you really shouldn't expect a, a good harvest because the ground is not fertile. So Yeshua had to come and die to redeem our, our, our spirits, our hearts. He came and changed our nature. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he is a new creation. He came and made our spirits new. He didn't change our flesh. If you had bunions on your toes before you received salvation through your shy, you still have bunions on your toes. He didn't come to, he didn't come to save your natural mind. If you couldn't do algebra prior to receiving your shy as Savior and submitting your life to him, after you receive Christ, you still can't do algebra. Because that's not where the change took place. But the change took place in your spirit, in your life, in your battery, if you will. That what makes you who you are. All right. And then after your spirit is changed into the image of Yeshua, right? The image of a higher son, Yeshua, Hamashiach. Now we go and we begin to renew our minds, our spiritual minds, the, the, the depth, the deep mind. Right. Not just this, this shadow mind where we go to class and we, you know, the conscious mind. No, it's deeper. This is happening in a realm that only the spirit can can direct. OK, because we don't we don't control that. So Jeremiah was explaining that the words of the most high are going to go into the inward parts of men. Let's let's finish this. Uh, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. That's down in the dirt. That's down in the, in the, in the spirit. This had not happened prior to this. All right. And write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they should be my people. Verse 34. And they shall teach no more every man, his neighbor. So that means at some point, every man was responsible for going to teach his neighbor or whatnot. And every man, his brother saying, know the Lord. Because they got these, these laws externally. All right. They wrote these laws on the doorpost. They will put it in a little like a little box or something that they will wear on their on their forehead. Uh, they had it written down on, 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 on like a scroll. But it was not written in that heart that they had because that heart is dark because of the nature of sin. But a day was going to come and Jer Jeremiah foresaw it through the spirit where the most high is going to be able to put his living word into a living heart, living spiritually changed heart that matches the nature of the most high. All right. He said, they shall teach verse 34, no more every man, his neighbor and every man, his brother saying, know the Lord for they shall all know me for the, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I'll remember their sin no more. Now, up until this point, you need, you, uh, we really need to understand that Israel's sins weren't forgiven they were blotted out for a year. It's like he just, you know, and then ne the next year the priest had to come back once a year and go in and offer blood, put it on the mercy seat uh, uh, for the most high to, to blot out their sins or cover their sins, you know, until the next year. And they had to do this re repetitively. They had to do it over and over again because their sins were not totally forgiven. But Jeremiah is talking about a day where their sins are going to be totally forgiven. And he says, I will remember their sin no more. All right. So they going to come where you ain't going to have to go and teach every man. It's like the most high is going to do something here that every man is going to have that connection with the most high. You ain't, you don't have to go to the priest or the high priest and offer a bullock and all of these types of things. Let's look at, uh, to get some understanding on that. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter number six. Uh, and we'll look at verses number four and nine through nine. Deuteronomy four, verse four through nine. Moses is speaking and he says, hear, O Israel. So he's talking to the children of Jacob. The Lord, our God is one Lord. Okay. It's one, you know, not three separate gods. They're one. Yeshua said, said, when he came to the earth, me and my father are one. Okay, so it's one, one power. 
But so we can understand with our natural minds and, and, and be able to appreciate the, 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 excuse me, the dynamics behind what he, who he is, he shows himself as the father, the authority. But then the spirit of him comes to live inside of men and he's that one that works inside of men to help them to do the will of the most high. All right, the scripture says, I believe it's Philippians, for it is God that worketh in us both to will and do of his good pleasure. That God that we're talking about there is not a separate God. That's the spirit of Ahia. That's the spirit of Yeshua. All right, living inside a believer. Okay, so Moses said, the Lord our God is one Lord. He's not three different gods. He just reveals himself to redeem man. He revealed himself through coming in a physical body. But the person inside the physical body is the I am that I am. Christ is the I am that I am. Yes, the uh, highest is, is the is the I am that that I am. OK, but in order to 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 get to us so we can understand and deal with him, we need to understand that we needed a savior. So the I am comes. He's the savior. Then we need to understand we need a helper that's going to help us after the savior leaves. And we until he comes back to 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 reign and rule. Right. Until he comes back and and we change out of this just natural body into a, a whole new resurrected body like he has until that time, we're going to need the spirit of the I am. So he never left us. All right. He's, he has not left us. He, he's living inside of us. Those of us that are redeemed and have received Christ, uh, uh, Yeshua as our savior. Moses said in verse four, hear, O Israel, Lord, our Lord, our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might, <clears throat> thy strength. Verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. They shall be in thy heart. So is Moses speaking prophetically here himself? They shall be in your heart. Because Jeremiah was saying too, God's going to write them in your heart. But let's go on and see where they had them written at prior to this. Verse seven, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in the house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou lie down and when thou risest up. Verse nine, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head and thou shalt be and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. Okay. I do apologize for the, the, the noise in the background. I do apologize for the noise in the background. I think someone is mowing grass, so hopefully you, you still can focus and, 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 and hear me because this word is a word that needs to needs to get out. All right, so we look at verse number eight again. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. So this is what I believe Jeremiah was talking about when he was saying, you're going to have to have a man come teach you, right? Because this is what they did. They, they went and taught. This person taught that person, and you teach, taught, teach your children and all. But a day's going to come where the I am is going to write it in the individual's heart. Then he said in verse nine, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. So they had the written word on all these external surfaces. But unlike Adam, who when the most high spoke into Adam and uh, uh, he breathed into Adam, then the word of the Lord would come in the cool of the day to speak to Adam. Adam was getting the word inside of his spirit. The most high was coding him or coded him because he was of the nature of the most high. But we are born in sin, not of the nature of the Most High. And so now we got to have a change take place in our ground, our dirt, if you will, our spirit. And then that way he could put his living word inside of a spirit that matches his word, a renewed spirit. OK, that's why he says we are a new creatures. Second Corinthians 5, 17 It's very important. You try a person trying to disobey these laws like you go and do homework and you pass a test and all of that. That's, that's different than this. This is a spiritual matter. And so the word of God, the spirit of the word, the truth of it, the depth of the word has to go into the depth of you. David says, deep calleth unto deep. Your deep, the depth of you is your spirit. It's, it's like a, 
uh, like an empty hollow area, you know, like a like a like a, a Kool Aid pitcher that that is like that is is not filled, and then over there is a spout where water is coming from the well. Your emptiness is calling for the life coming from the well. Well, the Most High's word is the flowing water coming from the well. Your spirit is the empty vessel that wants the Most High to fill it. You're thirsting for it. So his deep, his word comes into your deep. Your belly is the term they use, but it's not your natural belly. It just means the hollow area that needs to be filled. And Yeshua said on that day, I think it was St. John, it's in John chapter uh, 7, verse 37 and 38, I believe he says on that great day, the last day of the feast, Yeshua stood up and said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly, his belly, that hollow area, his being, his depth, his spirit shall flow rivers of living water. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to be poured into men. Then when he pour into men, he's going to flow into men, making men like, like he is, learning his word, putting his word on their inward parts. And then the spirit comes in to change them so that their minds are renewed. Paul says in Ephesians 4, 23, I believe it is, uh, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. <clears throat> I believe that's where uh, I read that one. Let's make sure. I like to go back to the word because this is this is this is what we everything we do. I mean, if somebody's teaching you and, and they're not using the word as their example, if the word of God is not what they are using to teach you, then you 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 really need to be leery of that because you want the word of the most high. The word of the most high um directing you not their feelings, not what they think, but what the reality is. And the reality is that the word of the Most High is spirit and it is and it's life. Life. All right? Yes, Ephesians 4.23 says, the, 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 Paul writes and says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. All right? So that's your spiritual mind. We got to be renewed because there are things down in the depth of our natural mind. You know, before we were saved, if we were engaged in activity, right? Before I was saved, right? There are things that I did before I was delivered by your shadow. There are things that I did. There are things that I saw. There are magazines that I, that I uh, looked at pictures of that are, are, are read. There was music that I listened to that had a thought in it, and I listened to it over and over again, it went past my conscious mind and got down into the depth of me. You see what I'm saying? And 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 and, and I'm sure many people can attest to this, people that struggle with different things. There are people out there that struggle with pornography, right? There are people that struggle with pornography, right? And 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 some those thoughts and that evil has gone down into the spiritual mind. In their case, that dark Spiritual mind, the darkness, right? It's down in there. Okay, if you listen to a song over and over and over again, what begins to happen is it penetrates the, the dirt of you, the depth of you, and goes down in there, and the word or the thought is a seed, and it starts producing it. Now you don't look at a woman the way you should, right? You're looking at her, uh, uh, a man, I believe this, a man is either a predator or he's a protector. The Most High created him to be a protector. But if he's not restrained by the word of the most high and he doesn't love the word of the most high, then he will become a predator. He will go out and uh, uh, manipulate women or be involved with women that are not, that is, that, that is not his wife. Why, why is he doing that? Because that thought, that thing is going past the conscious mind is deep down inside of it. So when he sees a woman, instead of seeing a woman as a, as, as, as a, as a, uh, Precious creation of the Most High that will grow up to be, a, uh, that will become a wife. You know, he's seen her as like a lion looking at a wildebeest. See, to go and get what he can from her to satisfy his urges. Because 
The words that's down in his heart are not the words of Yeshua. They're the words of the devil. The devil uses the same principle. So if you keep watching television shows that's showing uh, 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 men and women in and out of bed, showing a woman's body where you should not be looking at her body that way, you watching that, and then you go and get in your bed and you start to go to sleep. Now your conscious mind is, is, is not alert, right? What's there? That's subconscious. And the next thing you know, you're dreaming. You're dreaming about a, a, a different woman. You're dreaming about Im, Im, uh, improper uh, uh, acts. So it's important that we get the word down in our spirits and that our minds be renewed. So Jeremiah said that a day's coming where he's going to go and write his word in your inward parts, right? Moses explained how they used to have the word written on the door post, had it written, uh, they would carry it, you know, head on the, the frontlets here and, and all of that. But let's see what the New Testament, or should I say the New Covenant, I want to say the New Covenant, because Jeremiah said that there's going to be a New Covenant. Now, sometimes people don't want to hear this, but again, men's feelings is one thing. I'm concerned about what the Most High feels and what he desires. So let's go now to uh, Hebrews chapter number 8, all right? Hebrews chapter number 8, and let's start reading, all right? Let's start reading in verse, let's see, verse number one, Hebrews 8 and 1. Now of these things which we have spoken, this is the sum, okay, you got to bring things together. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens, just like I was explaining. So we will understand that we have a representative. Adam used to be our representative. He failed us. The most high sins comes in the bodily form. We call that bodily form Yesha, Yesha, right? Yesha lives in this earth a life like a hum, like a, a human life. He dies, take on all the sins of the world, all the sins of all men put on him. He never sinned. He obeyed his father. All right, but his job coming here was to become like us, have a body that he could take up to the heavenly temple. Because I want you to understand the temple that Israel had. That Moses had a, made a pattern after, you know, the tabernacle, tabernacle and all of that. And they had the different curtains and they had the, the, the showbread and they had the Ark of the Covenant and all that. That was a pattern. That's not the real temple. The real temple is in heaven, right? So they were making a pattern here. And so Christ gives his body as the lamb. He's, he operates as the priest, meaning he offers his body. Then he, his body is, is killed. He's killed. He's the sacrifice, right? And so he takes his blood and presents it to the Father in the heavenly temple. All right, you can find this. If you want to read some of this, it's over Hebrews chapter number 10. I think it talks about it as you go through. Uh, I'm trying to deal with certain points, so the video is not that long. But let's keep on reading. So he's sitting at the right hand of majesty. It's not like, you say, well, that's two people. That's two in your mind. You can't grasp the truth of the I am. Your natural, finite mind cannot grasp the fact that he is one, yet Christ is saying, I am the Father, and the Father, I'm in the Father, the Father's in me. We're one. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, Father. And we try to wrestle with our minds, and therefore we start getting all these different types of denominations and divisions, when what we need to do is just humble ourselves and say, Father, we accept what you're saying, even though we can't understand the dynamics of it because our minds cannot go to that level. And when I say that, I want to give you an example of what I mean. All right, let's say you have a... a uh, a CD player, not a CD player, you have a, a, a what What do they call it? I'm saying a CD, but when you want to watch a movie, and the term escapes me right now, but you have a, a, a Blu-ray disc, right, which I believe is one of the more higher quality, Blu-ray disc, you have a movie that you want to watch on this disc, right, but your player is not a blue, is not, is, it's not Blu-ray. Okay, meaning the movie is on a high quality disc. Your player that will play it is a few years older. So when you're going to stick that, take that disc, the new advanced disc, and stick it into your player that's an older player, what's going to happen? Are you going to be able to see the movie? No, you're not going to be able to see the movie. Because that older disc can handle the level. The, the depth, the technology, the advancement 
of the new disc. On that new disc are words. But those words cannot be handled by that older disc player. And this is the problem Israel had. They were receiving high quality word from the Most High, but their disc player was under the old covenant. So what the Most High did is gave them natural things that they could relate to to, sh to let them know my standards are high. You can't wear this. You can't do this. You can't eat this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this. You can't do this, right? Because he's showing you my ways are high. But what he's also saying is there's a whole lot more that I want to say to you all, but y'all can't handle it right now. And for those that uh, may not understand what I'm saying by that, I'm going to try to remember to come back to Hebrews 8. Let's go to St. John chapter number 16. St. John chapter number 16. And we'll look at verse number third, no, verse number 12. This is Yeshua talking to his disciples. Now, his disciples were Hebrews. They were children of Jacob, right? That's who he came to first. That's just the reality. He came first to the lost sheep of Israel. Then, after Israel rejected and, and, and rebelled and all of that, he, he extended out to the Gentile. So that means those that are not of uh, children of uh, children of Jacob's bloodline, they will receive the truth. But he came to the children of Israel. That's just biblical. That's just the scripture. All right. So these disciples of his, they are following him. But like I've said before, they got an old dis. I didn't say it like this. But I'm gonna say it like this now. They got an old displayer. Their heart can handle the old covenant. But Yeshua is giving them what? According to St. John 6, 63. The words that I'm speaking unto you, he says, they are spirit in their life. But your player can't handle the life on this disc I got. You know, I said a Blu-ray disc, a high quality disc. So he had high quality words that he wanted to give them. But they were like, well, you know, this is what he, the Most High gave us on this old disc player. And so they had the, the, the laws and they're, they're trying their best to keep all of these laws. But everything he wants to say to them can't be given to them because their player is not of a high enough quality to grasp it. Now you say, well, give a scripture to back that up. Okay, here we go. St. John 16, verse number 12. Coming from the mouth of the Savior of mankind. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you. I got so much I want to say to you guys. And sometimes people think because the disciples were there, man, they knew, they knew Christ better than those today. Well, I don't necessarily agree with that. They knew him physically. They could relate to him through the five senses, you know, seeing, touching, hearing, tasting, smelling, all of that. But so far as grasping him spiritually, I, they, I don't think they didn't grasp it. He's saying it. They didn't grasp it. That's why he taught in parables. And even when he taught in parables, sometimes he had to come back and break it down even further for them to grasp it. Because their display of their heart, its ability to understand was limited. And what he's given them is of a higher nature. His word is of a higher nature. So when he says that he's seated at the right hand of the Father, he does that so we can understand that we have a representative in heaven. They're seated together, but they're not three separate people. It's for us to understand that God had to come and save us. God, the most high had to come and save us. A higher had to come and he came when he came. The I am inside of him. If you look at it, I think it's St. John 8, 58, where those, those, uh, Israelites and whatnot, they were saying back to, to Christ, I uh, may have been the Pharisees or whatnot, and said that Abraham was, uh, are you greater than Abraham? And then I think he says in St. John 8, 58, he said, before Abraham was, I am. Now that was your shy saying that. He's saying, I am. I am the I that I, I am. The I that I am. For those that want to separate, you know, the father and the son. My mission now is to be down here as a man. So I'm going to come down here and act like a man. But I do want y'all to understand that I'm greater than Abraham. I'm greater than Moses. I am the I am. Now I believe that's St. John 8, 58, where that is, is found at. All right. Yes, and I want to go to it because I want to make sure I'm in line with the scripture. St. John 8, 58, Jesus said unto them, or Yeshua said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And he says it throughout the scripture. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am. 
the light of the world. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. He's telling you over and over again, I am. I am that I am. And what I am right now is the bread of life. What I am right now is your savior. Your Shahahiah. I have a, a, a message that the Most High gave me on that. I encourage you to watch it if you have not. Your Shahahiah. Your Shahah being Y-A-S-H-A. -A, Ahaya being A-H-A-Y-A-H. All right? And it's, it's your Shahahiah, the I am savior. Okay? So now let's go back to St. John, because I want to show you how they were not able to grasp what he was saying to them. So we go back to St. John 16, and we go down to verse number 12, I think it was. He says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them right now. When, what do you mean you can't bear them? You can't grasp them. You, you, you can't pick it up. You put that, that, that new disc in that old disc player, and it, it, it can't handle it. So what he's going to say, he, but he's not leaving them hanging. He's not leaving them without an answer. He goes on to verse number 13. He said, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you in all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. This is the job of the Holy Spirit. And this is how he's going to write his law, write his words inside of men. He's going to redo the displayer. He's going to take out that old spirit that's condemned because of Adam's transaction that led all men to be born short of the glory of God. I think that's Romans 3.23. All men born short of the glory of God. He got to change the display of your ability to be able to get from him. And this is why so many people are frustrated. They're doing all, they're trying to keep all the laws. They're trying to do everything that, 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 that they said. Some of them are told that uh, the New Testament is not for us. You know, it's just the Old Testament. And so they're trying to go through the Old Testament doing something that it ain't go, it ain't go work. You got to have the spirit come inside of you and change your makeup. Change your ground to be fertile for the living seed that your shy a high is going to plant inside of your spirit, so you can have a spiritual nature that can receive the spiritual word of God. But He's letting them know y'all can't grasp it right now. That's why they had to wait until the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came down and He came in like the, the sound of wind and set upon each of them fire, and that fire symbolized the spirit, the 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 the. the Ability of the Most High coming upon man, and he went on to fill them, diffuse them, imbue them, permeate their being, thereby changing them uh, to be able to receive the disc, receive the information of higher quality. So let's go now to another scripture that I want to that I want to show you for that. I said going back to Hebrews 8. Well, let's go to Hebrews 8 so I can make sure I deal with this part. All right, so in Hebrews 8 and verse 2, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle. Let's talk about the one above in the heavens, not this one here, which the, which the Lord pitched and not man. Moses pitched that other one. The one up there, he didn't pitch that one. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on the earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to the law. Now, look at verse 5. Who served unto the example and shadow of heavenly things. The things that were that he laid out for us to be able to get an idea, our, our forefathers to be able to get an idea how holy the Most High was, their discipline, discipline can't handle what we can handle today through the Spirit because their spirit, I'm using as an example, displayer was of a lower quality, wasn't able to handle the information he was going to give them. So he gave them things that can handle they, they're able to tell what color this is and, why, and not to where it is. They're able to look at an animal and say, okay, that animal is clean and not clean. Even though he comes back in Peter and shows Peter up on, up while he's sleeping there on top of the roof, showed him a dead sheet down and showed him all these animals and said, Peter, get up and eat. And Peter like, huh? No way. You know, well, the implication, no, I'm not going to eat that. Because Peter's displayer was saying, hmm, that I've been taught is unclean. And the most high showed it to him three times. He said, that which I call clean, don't call it unclean. The point I'm trying to say is Peter was going to struggle uh, with that because he was showing him, I got, I'm getting ready to send you to some people that you call unclean. 
you got to go see Cornelius. And if you stuck in the old displayer, dispensation, if you will, you ain't gonna be able to do my will. Now you feel with the Holy Spirit because this is after the day of Pentecost that this is taking place. But you got to understand your displayer said they were unclean. Today, if my spirit come into a man or my word declares something clean, it's clean, Peter. So you need to go on and minister to Cornelius, which he did. You know, that's the implication of it. All right. So my, what I'm trying to say is, but Peter wouldn't have been able to grasp that. In fact, I don't think he would have even obeyed the Most High if he had not been filled with the Holy, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. I think the reason he was able to, even though he battled, because down in that deep of depth of him, he's like, no way, we don't do that. We don't touch. We don't deal with the Gentiles. We don't eat with the Gentiles. So he's had some rim, some, some, some remainder of thoughts like that, that was in his mind. One time, I think uh, the Gentiles were coming down and Paul then was uh, uh, there and Peter didn't eat with the Gentiles. Now, he did it before these other brothers came down, like James or whatnot from Jerusalem. But this particular day, he didn't want to eat with the Gentiles because that truth, that truth that he had back from that old displayer, that old covenant said, we don't do this. But then the Holy Spirit is trying to show him. And Paul speaks out and says, hey, 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 wait a minute now. What you're doing here is not right. This is the implication. So we can still struggle. But he wanted to write his words in our hearts. Cornelius needed salvation just like a Hebrew needs salvation. And in order for you to be obedient to me, you're going to have to follow the spirit. That's what the Bible says in Romans 8. They that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. If you can't be led by the spirit, who will be in you if you receive Christ as your savior and you receive the, 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 the Holy Spirit. And if, you, if, and if you're baptized with the Holy Spirit and he's filling you, then he's coaching you along, telling you what to do. But if you stuck with the displayer that said, no, you're not going to be of a lot of service to the most high. And this is why they rejected Christ. I said to you in the last message, I think, that I, that I preached, that um, they, they, he came unto his own, John 1, and his own received him not. Those Hebrews didn't receive him. They rejected him because they had that old displayer. Yes is what the Most High told them, but he couldn't give them all everything. So he used types and shadows, and that's what this scripture is saying, types and shadows. The scripture says in verse number five, this is uh, Hebrews eight and five. It says, who served unto the example in the shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee, pattern showed thee in the mountain. So we ain't to worship the tabernacle he put down here because that's just a shadow, a type. A shadow is an image of the real. But the shadow can't do the work. Do you want the shadow of a man working for you or you want the man working for you? Let's say you have to lift bags of corn and load them onto the back of a truck. And that's your job, right? And a man's shadow, if that was possible, just showed up. Can he do anything? He looks like him, but he's not the power. He's not the reality. You need the real thing. Well, the definition for truth, the, tr the way I define truth as I've studied it, truth is the reality that lies at the basis of an appearance. The real man is the reality. His shadow is the appearance. He wanted to show them more than just what they understood through all these different laws, which they struggled with and couldn't do, didn't do. But the most high counted it as faith. You see that with Abraham, when they, when a person would obey what he said, he said, now I'm going to count that as righteousness. I'm going to count your faith as righteousness. But there's going to come a day when I'm going to make you righteous on the inside. I'm going to rewrite your CD disc. I'm going to, I'm going to re, how can I say it? I'm going to change and upgrade so you can receive more from me. All right. So we're going down. Uh, look at verse number eight. For finding fault with them. No, let's go to verse seven. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for a second. If the first covenant, the first disc, CD disc, the man's spirit, 
which could not connect with God. That's why he gave them symbols and shadows, and they had, to, they had to do this and do that. Only one man, once a year, could even go close to a little flame of the Most High that was on top of the mercy seat, and, and, and he didn't do things right. He would fall dead, and they would pull him out. So they didn't have a connection directly with the Most High. He allowed them to follow certain rules and ordinances and things like that. And then once a year come and apply the blood of a, of, of a lamb and, and accepted that until the time of reformation. We need your shy in our life. We need the Ruach HaKadosh in our lives to upgrade us so we can receive and have fellowship with the Most High. Not just sing a song, but the song means something to us because the word of it is inside. There are people that do things religiously, but inside in fact the scripture says it this way they draw not to me with their lips but their hearts are far from me Yeshua uses this even when he's referring back to what Isaiah said I think Isaiah said in Isaiah 29 chapter I believe these people draw not to me with their mouth but their hearts the hearts are far from me see their mouth can quote a thing but their heart is not aligned with the most high when something is aligned, it comes together, right? Right, like gears, aligned. Our hearts got to be aligned with him. He needs to write his word, his intent in our hearts. Okay, let's go on now. Uh, verse number seven. So the first, if the first, if that first covenant had been faultless, meaning it had faults, and the Most High knew that, let's go on. Then should no place have been sought for the second. So it, he knew I'm going to have to upgrade this. I know I'm going to give a second one here. But these men can't do it. I got to become a man and go down and do it to help them. And if they will believe in me, if they will believe in the one called Yasha, some call him Jesus Christ. We call him Jesus Christ in our English Bibles. But the Hebrew name, Yasha, if they will believe in Yasha, then they can receive salvation, and I change their display. I change their spirit where they'll be able to receive from me. Verse 8, for finding fault with them. He found fault with them because they couldn't handle the truth. Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But then he said, I'm going to send the spirit of truth. Who is truth? Christ is truth. So he's going to send the spirit of Christ, the spirit of truth. Same person. Except he ain't in a physical body walking around. His spirit. Is with us. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day comes, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. He got to do a new covenant to help us. But but they, the descendants of, of, of Jacob rejected Yeshua. He came with the new upgrade and they rejected it. I think it's St. John 1 and 12. I may be off on the verse. John, I keep saying St. John. I don't want to use St. John. Uh, simply because it's the gospel according to John. You know, I I don't want to get over into any Catholicism and things like that. So I, it's the gospel according to John. Chapter 1, I believe verse 12 says, As many as received him, gave he power. There's the power to change the disc, right? Ability, energy, gave he power, spiritual energy, power to, to what? To make them... Become sons of God. What do you mean sons of God? The son is an image bearer. Just like Yeshua is the, he bears the image of Ahiah to us. Now we receiving the spirit of Yeshua coming in, changing our spirit. Romans chapter eight says it's something like this. I forget the exact verse, Romans chapter eight, but he says, my, I, my spirit testified with the Holy Spirit, the Ruach that I am a son of God, a child of God. So he changes our display, changes our spirit, if you will, from darkness to light. Then the Holy Spirit comes in and fellowships with us. Who's the Holy Spirit? He's the spirit of Yeshua, Hamashiach. We have direct fellowship with him and he writes his law in us. The scripture says that the word, uh, 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 that, that Christ shall dwell in us richly, being rooted in us. I think that's over in Ephesians. Chapter number three or four. So verse 8, for finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day comes, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in that day. I'm going to say it again, verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day. That's, that's, that's Hebrews 8 and 9. 
Eighth chapter of Hebrews, verse number nine. Not according to the covenant. It's a new covenant. You need a new display, if you will. That I made with their fathers in that day. When I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my co covenant. And I regarded them not, saith, saith the Lord. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. He came to do this to Israel first. They rejected him. It went to the Gentiles. But the time is coming now where he's turning back to Israel. He's turning back to the children of Jacob. And he's, uh, I believe it's in Baruch, uh, in the Apocrypha, where he says they're going to come to themselves in the land of their captivity. And that's what's happening. There are a lot of captives in this land that we live in. But they're going to come to themselves. Those that are of the, the, the seed of, 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 of Jacob going to come to themselves and realize who they are and then realize that they have been rejecting the truth. Some of them want to throw, some want to throw away the Jesus of the Bible. Throw away the image men have given you, yes, because that's not how he looked. But don't you throw away the words. His words are spirit and life, according to St. John 6, 63. Don't throw away his interaction with his disciples. And don't throw away his apostles that he called to declare his word. That's a trick of the enemy, the devil, to get you to throw away the New Testament. Or information about the new covenant. Because if you don't have the new covenant, you're not going to be standing. I don't care if you are a Hebrew. I don't care if you're a child of Jacob. If your spirit doesn't change into the nature of Yahshua HaMashiach, Meaning that you become a new spiritual creature after his image. You're not going to spend eternity with him. you just not. You got to love him with your whole heart, your whole soul and your whole mind. And you can't do that with your natural spirit just like it is unredeemed because that's the spirit of darkness. Though you may be religious. And though you may feel like you, Paul said he felt like he was blameless and all this. But then Paul took and said, I count all these things as dumb. I think that's in Philippians, maybe chapter two or three. He said, I counted all as dumb. He said, man, I was a Hebrew of Hebrews. I was, I was circumcised on, I believe, the eighth day. He, he goes through laying out all these things. He said, but what good is all of that? I don't know your shy. I don't know God's son. He sent the new covenant and the one that mediated the new covenant, the mediator of the new covenant is your shy Hamashiach, the anointed savior. If I don't receive him, I am not pleasing to the Ahaya. Hear me clear today. I don't care how well you do the law and all the things that may have been traditions of the past, uh, uh, children of Israel did, children of Jacob. If you don't receive your shy Hamashiach into your heart, and allow him to change you and receive his spirit himself in you to lead and direct you. This is going to hurt for some people. You're not his. Not spiritually. You may be of the DNA blood of Abraham. But what good is that once you stop breathing? What good is that once you stop breathing? Because that body they're going to put in the grave with every other body. Whether they was Hebrew or not. It's going to be put in the ground. But that breath of you and that spiritual mind of you is going to have to stand before a higher but you won't have your DNA, your Jacob DNA. No, wake up, Jacob. Wake up, Jacob. You got to go past just the physical link to, of your, to your ancestors. You got to go past that. And you got to come to your Shah Hamashiach and ask him to forgive you of all your sins. He already took the blood and put it on the, on the altar. They call it the cross. And he's died so that you could be free. Again, I apologize for the noise, but I'm getting ready to end this right now anyway. And we'll get into another teaching uh, probably some, some later if the Most High uh, gives me life. Beloved, be strong and know you're not alone. Shalom.